that he was always young. In all his life, he lived young. So we follow the path of people, those who are young, live young in this world, die young from this world, and then they are going to be raised as young from the other world as well. About Ashabi uh, Kahf, Allah SWT has said, innahum fitiyatun. They are youth, although they were sleeping for a long time, but at the same time, Abbas Muntala considered as they are youth. And uh, the Imam that we follow today, present Imam, 
when he is going to uh, rise up after centuries, then again he is going to be youth. So we believe in the people, those who are youth, and uh, we live as youth, and uh, we consider ourselves the followers of the one who is called Al Hassan Al Hussein, Sayyida Shabab Ahl Al Jannah. Peace say salawat. <laughs> Yesterday, I said that uh, the worship and the path towards the worship is love and affection. And if we uh, like to consider one of the most important secrets, as uh, everything in this world has its own secret, and one of the secrets of the worship is love and affection with uh, the Lord with the ma'bud, that if we like to consider ourselves as the people, those who practice the worship, so there are two kinds of people in this world, one uh, who practices the worship and second who loves with the worship. The path that we uh, see, path of Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam, they not only practice the worship, but they love with the worship. They have ish with the worship. And one of the most important qualities of uh, the mu'min and, uh, and the preferred people in this world, in hadith, it is said, Afdalun nasi man ashq al ibadah. Yesterday I said, the most important people are the one, <clears throat> those who have ish with the ibadah, those who love with the worship. Wa those who love with the, the worship and also they uh, do mu'aniqa. Mu'aniqa is one of the manners that when we meet with our mu'mineen, there are three different steps that are being said. One step is uh, salam. Second step is musafaha, one of the rights of a mu'min. When uh, a mu'min meet, meets with the uh, another mu'min and greeting is it's been said you should start with salam saying salam alaikum in best of manner and uh, I was reading in hadith of uh, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam <laughs> that Prophet has said that there are few things that really bother shaitan that really make him painful and one of them is uh, a saying salam, greeting upon one another when mu'mineen meet with one another and say salam, that is one of the things that really bothers him and he becomes annoyed, he becomes angry because of this practice. And second practice after uh, salam, it's musafaha, that means shaking hand with, uh, with the respect and honor, shaking hand with the both hands. And third, um, practices is being said mu'anaqa mu'anaqa becomes out of onuq that means meeting with neck and neck you know uh, when we like to meet with one another then our necks meet with one another that is mu'anaqa um, in hadith it's been said man'anaqa that means the one who meets with the worship and it's not only just making a musafha but we would like to meet with the worship, through worship with Allah SWT. That means making a mu'anaqa with Allah SWT. Getting so closer with Allah SWT as a mu'min gets closer and their own, their necks are close to each other. That is how a mu'min becomes closer to Allah SWT through the worship. That is what it's been said, Afdalun nasi man ashiqaha. The preferred person and the best of the person and chosen person within the people is the one who makes ishq with the ibadat. This ishq with the ibadat, it brings us closer to the yaqeen. That is one of the final destination of the worship. That uh, in Surah Hujur, Allah SWT has said that وَعَبُودْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ that you should worship your Lord 
until you can reach to the final destination. And final destination of mu'min is yaqeen. That means we are on the path of yaqeen. We live for yaqeen. And all our aspects of life have to lead us towards yaqeen. In this world, there are two types of the communities. One is community of confusion, a community of the doubts, people, those who live with the doubts and confusions. And there is a community that lives for the, the certainty, that goes towards the certainty. Every step that they take, that is step toward the belief, that is step toward the faith. We as Muslim and being as a mu'min, every step that we take, we are getting closer to the yaqeen. Our worship is leading us toward that yaqeen that we will be able, although um, when our Mufassirin, they translated and interpreted this verse, Wa'abud Rabbaka, you should worship your Lord, Hatta Ya'atiyaka Yaqeen, until you can reach up to the yaqeen and certainty. They said yaqeen, it means that death, with the death, you can reach up to the final yaqeen and final certainty. So there are two types of people. People, those who say that we open our eyes and then we reach to this world and we can understand and realize this world. But there are people, those who say that we close our eyes and then we reach up to the final destination that is yaqeen. That means our concept that when we would like to reach to the yaqeen, it's not possible that we can reach to the final destiny in this world. This world is not going to provide us that yaqeen, that total certainty, a complete yaqeen. A complete yaqeen is going to be after we close our eyes from this world and reach to other world. When we can see other world, that means meet with our Lord. That is the point that we would be able to achieve that final yaqeen. Every day that we worship in this world and worshipping with love and affection, it makes us that we take another step towards the yaqeen. But that is the day, every day that passes, then we go a step further. But this is not the final step. That is not the final destiny. The final destiny is final yaqeen. Reaching to the final yaqeen where we can see everything with our eyes. So that means a mu'min can have certain types of the yaqeen. That is why in Quran it's been said, Kalla law ta'alamuna ilm al yaqeen. Latarawun al jaqeen. That beware. If you would have that knowledge, law ta'alamuna ilm al yaqeen. If you would have knowledge, and knowledge which is uh, knowledge of yaqeen, that means ilm al yaqeen is one of the stages. But when somebody can see everything with the eyes, and that is not possible with these physical eyes. When these physical eyes are going to close down, another type of the eyes are going to be open. And there are eyes which we open in this world while we are in worship. When somebody comes in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with love and affection, at that time another type of the eyes are going to be open. You cannot see other world with these physical eyes. You can see other world and beyond this world with the eyes of your heart. Eyes of hearts are going to be open. That means there is a moment when physical eyes are going to be closed. And eyes of the hearts are going to be opened. And that is the reason when it's been said that a mu'min or a munafiq or a kafir, when they are going to close the eyes, at that time they will see some reality. What type of reality? They will see reality coming towards them. 
a nur is going to lead towards them and that is nur of Ali Muhammad alayhi salam once it is said nur of the prophet peace be upon him nur of amirul mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam nur of fatima to zahra salam alayha these are anwar these are the lights that in this world with these physical eyes we will not be able to see that nur but when we close these physical eyes and open another type of the eyes that can see those anwar that means entering to the world of nur when you enter in the world of nur over there you can see the nur and that nur is yaqeen but for us it has been said hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen your yaqeen is going to reach when you enter to the world of yaqeen after the death yaqeen is equal to the death but we know the personalities those who lived in this world with yaqeen those who born in this world with the yaqeen that is why amir al-mu'minin alayhi salatu wassalam used to say that by god if all the curtains of the heaven are being removed nothing in my yaqeen is going to be increased that means i born with yaqeen i live with yaqeen i died with yaqeen those who have always with the certainty personalities of ahlul bayt alayhi salam are equal to yaqeen that means if you say ali equal to yaqeen and haq and haq equal to ali that is why prophet peace be upon him just translated ali he defined ali by saying al haqq ma aliyan wa aliyun ma al haqq we are behind haqq we are finding the truth we are searching for certainty but for them certainty it becomes equal to their personality because they born with that yaqeen they came in this world with the yaqeen they opened the eyes with the yaqeen and their their eyes never be closed from yet that yaqeen always living with the yaqeen A mu'min, his path is toward the path of Ahlul Bayt Rahmatul Salam. Please say salawat. So that means we are in the search of truth. That is why we say that we need to have belief. Belief is going to fill our doubts and our confusions. But in some of the aspects of our life, we have belief. and in that aspect where we have the belief doubts are being removed confusions are being removed a world you live in that is world of materialistic although sometimes they say that what is the difference between a believer and disbeliever there is a great difference between believer and disbeliever a disbeliever thinks that we as a human being are just like a fruit that one day this fruit is going to fell down from the tree <coughs> and after that it is going to die down there will be no uh, benefit for that and it becomes nothing after that but we do not believe that we are just like a fruit on the tree we as believer we believe that we are like a bird in cage that a day we become free from this world <coughs> and we enter in the world of freedom we enter in the world of yaqeen that is why ahlul bayt alayhi salam when they defined this world they said ad dunya sijnul mu'min this world is a prison of a mu'min wajannatul kafir it's paradise for the disbeliever a disbeliever considers this world as paradise but a believer looks at this world as a prison 
and waiting for a time when he becomes free from this world. That is why a shaheed, a martyr, when reaches up to the point because he was searching for the time that is time of the shahada that he can be free from this world. He can sacrifice his life and enter to Allah, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaheed of Tahari defines the Shaheed by saying the one who kills the death and enters to the other world. It's not dying in this world. There are many people, those who die in this world, but there are people, those who kill the death and enter to the death of martyrdom. Martyrdom, that means killing the death. After that, there is no death remaining. Becoming alive. Giving ourselves life. A life that means this life is going to be ending, another life is going to be starting. That means start of a life that is life abad. hayat abadi. An eternal life. Eternal life can start when this life is going to end. And if one can kill this death, which is physical death, he is going to be entering in hayat abadi. He says, Sarawak. So a materialistic life is life of confusion. Materialistic life is life of the doubts. That is why, you know, if you meet with a disbeliever, if you meet with a munafiq, they will always use, I'm not sure. I do not know. I'm not sure is there any, any word or not. Do we have anything after this world or not? But a believer opens his eyes in this world, thinks about beyond this world, makes his connection with the other world, with the ish, with the worship, when he enters by saying, as salatu mihrajul mu'min. That means a journey towards heaven. That means he has a glasses. Through these glasses, he can see beyond the world. He made his connection to the other world. So the time of the worship, that means a time to travel to the other world. Going out of this world. Leaving this materialistic world. Entering to the world which is world of reality, which is world of the truth, world of certainty, world of yaqeen. And if somebody practices all his life with this yaqeen and continues worshipping, a day his eyes are going to be open to the nur of Ahlul Bayt He says, Salawat. That means a life becomes life of yaqeen. <laughs> filling this life from yaqeen, filling this life with the belief that is journey of a mu'min. A mu'min is the one who knows his destination. A mu'min is not the one who does not know about his task, his final destination. He lives with the knowledge. That means a mu'min is aimful, a taskful person who knows his aim and objective. A life with the objective is the life of a mu'min. That is why because he knows about his final objective, all his actions become objectivable. Every action that he makes, it's full of objective. It is taskful. It is aimful. He's not doing anything without a reason. His life becomes reasonful. His life has secrets. When a life becomes life of secret, that means a life of hereafter. 
life of hereafter, what it means. That means we are not living in this world for this world, but we live in this world for other worlds. It is said that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam used to ask sometimes from his wives. It's very interesting. He used to ask from his wives, can you speak with me? Can you say a few words that I can feel that I live in this world? That I can be sometimes in this world. Prophet, peace be upon him, and personalities of Ahlul Bayt Ramusalam, their life is life of hereafter. It is life, not life of this world. That is why they become example for the people. In order to set example for those who are searching the path of truth, <laughs> The path of Yaqeen, there has to be one who lives with Yaqeen, who is equal to the Yaqeen, who is living in other world. So that is why he says that, can you speak with me sometimes, that I can realize that I am living in this world. <clears throat> Their eyes are always open to the other world, because they see this world in its reality. When you see this world within its reality, then you are not going to be confused. Then you have yateen. It's like if you are on the top of a building and if somebody asks you, can you jump from the building? And you have yateen. And if I jump from the building, I'm not going to live. I will die. I have that yateen. And because of this yaqeen, this action, it becomes difficult for me. I cannot step up. I cannot jump from the building. That means wherever we have yaqeen, there is no confusion. I will not be able to do any certain things where I have yaqeen. If I know the reality of this world, if I know the secret of Muharramat, if I know the secret of Wajibat, in that case I will not be confused. I will have Yateen. That is why Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam has said, Ad-dunya jeefatun. It's murdar. It's dead body. Nobody goes and eats dead body, meat of the dead body. But because we have not seen that, we will be able to see in its reality when we leave this world. <coughs> that means death is going to lead us. Death will become a bridge that we can reach up to the yateen. We have been promised many things. We have been asked that you have to open your eyes in this world, this worship, it is leading us towards that yaqeen. That's why Quran, when it said, Wa'abud, you have to use this worship. Make this as a bridge. Hatta ya'ati yaqal yaqeen. This worship is not for time being, for one time or two times. It is not for five times. But living in the life of worship, a mu'min is not the one who worships five times a day. That is a wrong concept. It has been said, Wa'abud Rabbak Hatta Ya'atiyakal Yaqeen. We have not been asked that you have to worship five times. We have been asked you should worship until you reach up to the final destination of Yaqeen. What it means? It means worship and hold your life. Or your life has to be life of worship. A life filled with the worship. We are every time in worship. We changes, change our aspects. Sometimes we come in majlis. 
there is also worship. I go for my job, there is also a worship. I come serve my family, then it becomes a worship. I am somebody who is serving at home. If there is a female, she is serving at home, then it becomes worship. All the aspects of our life become as worship because we live for the life of worship. We are servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if life becomes filled with the worship, then this life is going to be to the final destination, that is destination of Yaqeen. Worship is part of Yaqeen. Every worship it takes us towards the Yaqeen. That means we are filling our aspects of our life. Peace say salawah. These days and night that we are passing through, these days and nights are taking towards another aspect, another step, that is our final step. Every part of our life is a journey. You know, if somebody is driving towards the destination, and if he knows about the destination, he is going to reach up to the destination. And there is no confusion in that. There is no doubt. But in a case, if you do not know what is my destination, at that time you are confused. You are just running around. You are driving through the streets and searching your path. There can be two types of the situation. One, that an accident happened, something happened that somebody is just going to say to you that you have reached to the final destination. But this world is not a world of accidents. It's reasonful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide us GPS. You know, we, today we have GPS. In order to get out of these confusions and doubts, Allah provided the GPS. As today physical world, scientific world has provided us GPS. This GPS is just for driving. But where is our GPS for our life? Do we really have a GPS for our life that takes us towards the final destination? That at the final moment it says that you have reached to your final destination. Yes, brothers and sisters, that GPS is provided to us. That GPS is holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's been said, Hudal lil muttaqeen. Alif la meem. Dalik al kitabu. La rayba fi. It's completely perfect GPS. La rayba fi. There is no confusion. Hudal lil muttaqeen. But it's guide for the people, those who are searching for the path. Those who like to reach to the final destination. But in order to understand, in order to uh, use this GPS, you need to have the people, those who can train you according to this GPS. So when you first part your GPS, there has to be somebody who can uh, just guide you, maybe you can buy the menu. So with that you know. So today of, of course our children also know about the computer and uh, that is becoming just as a play for them. That they, they are playing every day with uh, the computer and technology. But this technology that I am speaking about, that is technology of the life. It is not technology that we use today. Technology of the life, in order to understand, it is important there has to be teacher. And teacher for the Quran, teacher for our real GPS, there are Ahlul Bayt Rehmus Salaam. That is why one of the definition of the Imam, it is said the one who holds your hand and takes you to the final moment. And then he says, you have reached to the final destination. We call that as our Imam. We do not believe in Imam that just leaves us in our prayer. We do not believe in an Imam that is Imam of our fiqh. 
We do not believe in Imam that just guide us in some of the aspects of our life. We believe in Imam that holds our hands and takes us up to the final destination and then says, this is your final destination. Brothers and sisters, this GPS can be used by the personalities, those who know the secret of this life. That is why the worship in the life of Ahlul Bayt Ramusalam becomes in a such a way that they provide it ornament to this worship and they become Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wassalam. So what I want you to say that if uh, we look at this, this uh, verse of Quran it is saying about our final destination. Our final destination is destination of Yaqeen. And that is Yaqeen which is called Haqqul Yaqeen. That means the Yaqeen where we can see everything with our eyes. In order to reach up to the Haqqul Yaqeen, one needs to follow the path of Ilmul Yaqeen. That means every day of our life, we have a knowledge of Yaqeen. Every worship, it leads us towards that Haqqul Yaqeen. That means our steps in this world become as a life and a whole life is life of the worship, a life of the service. And these services have no end. Sometimes, you know, uh, those people who become vol volunteer for various types of organizations sometimes or uh, maybe working in any movement, we say that, you know, I was working for certain years. Now let me leave this job and do something else. Is there any point that where we can say that I have completed my duties? In this world, no. This world is world of responsibilities. Responsibilities never end until we leave this world. We are servant of Allah SWT and we need to live in the service of Allah SWT. Do you think, for example, a prophet can say that uh, no, it is the time that I have to leave. Somebody else has to take this responsibility. Or a prophet becomes retired. So somebody was asking, uh, when I was in England, um, a brother asked that, uh, Maulana, how would these Maharajas, when they become retired, because you know, we live in a, in a world and we do some job, we are in a, in a profession where people become retired. So he was thinking that maybe Maharajas also become retired. Emarja never become retired unless he loses those abilities of marja'iyah. Unless he becomes uh, in a situation that he cannot make this ijtihad. In all his life, he has to complete his responsibilities. A mu'min also is in the path of yaqeen. He's always in service. He needs to say always labbay. You know, when we go for hajj, we have been asked that you have to say labbay, Allahumma labbay. But is that only when we go for hajj, at that time we need to say, I am present, O my Lord. No. There is something that in whole our life, as Ahlul Bayt Salam used to practice, that when Adhan is recited, it is said, Hayya ala salah. Then they used to say, labbay, Allahumma labbay. Standing for the prayer, labbay, Allahumma labbay. Whenever verses of Quran are being recited, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. At that time they used to say, labbay, Allahumma labbay. You called upon me. You said, oh, those who believe. That is the point you need to say. That I am believer and I am present before you. Living 
in the age of presence, always being present before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always giving our services, offering our services before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered as a life of yaqeen. Never being apart from the life of yaqeen. That leads us towards the final destination, that is, destination of Yaqeen. But there is a world that is world of materialistic. Unfortunately, when we came into the world, a materialistic world, we are being affected because of that. We started thinking like materialistic people. Our mentality became as mentality of materialistic people. Although we live as, a, as Muslim, but at the same time we are affected. We entered into society, and this society is affecting us every day. We think that we are Muslim, but at the same time living with the confusion. A believer when he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then aspects of life should be filled with yaqeen, with the belief. I was talking today with the children, and I said that uh, there is a term that is used a lot today with the youth. So they say, I am bored. Isn't that correct? So you see, hear that term commonly. Most of people they use that. This term was not existing a few years back, but it, it became very common within Muslim societies as well. When you become bored, you become bored when you are disconnected from Allah Subhanahu wa While you live in the life of remembrance, while you live connected with Allah Subhanahu wa there is no point that you become bored. Why do you consider yourself as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is why Amir al-Mu'mineen advises to the youth. Rabbihu anfusakum bi badai'il hikam. Give rest to your bodies by learning various types of the wisdom. That for example, if you are tired of learning one wisdom, start learning another one. And if you become tired of that, start learning something else. Don't leave a room in your life that you can be bored. When you do not have anything to do, at that time you become bored. But the one who considers himself as responsible person never leaves a room where he can be bored. See the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam. That sometimes he is in the government. Sometimes he takes the bag, goes outside serving the poor people serving the widows, serving the orphans. Sometimes he comes back and start working with his wife. Sometimes he stands before Allah Taala, starts worshipping. So in all his aspects, you will not see any time, any room in the life of Amir al where you can call him that he is bored now because he does not have time to be bored. Don't leave a time in your life that you can be bored. But fill your life living as a responsible personality. See how Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam changed. Change the environment of the people. Those who came with Abba Abdullah Hussain, Imam started training them. He trained during these few days. You know, we hear 
about Imam Hussein al that uh, these days, for example, he entered in Karbala on second and lived up to the ten. But when you start reading, you'll find that it's almost a whole life. These eight days of the life of Imam become as a whole life. That we all consider that during our life and search about that, read about that. But just one night that he spent in the battlefield of Karbala, Shabi Ashur. Imam changed the concept of his campaign. He totally changed the concept of his campaign. How Imam changed the concept of the campaign? It is said during the night, Imam Islam turned off lights and he spoke with the companion. He said, Oh my companion, if you like to leave this feral field, <coughs> me as Hussein, I'm going to take the bayah that you can leave Karbala. It's only me. I'm going to be targeted tomorrow. You don't need to be. You have to leave. In order to train them, Imam gave a total freedom. And everybody said, that we believe that we cannot leave this battlefield. We will be standing with you. We believe in you, O Hussain. When they became in the life of certainty, then it is said that Imam Ali Islam said, now I'm going to open the curtains of heaven. And Imam started speaking, Oh Habib Mazahir, can you see your place in the heaven? Oh Muslim Ibn Ausajah, let me show you that you can see your place in the heaven. In uh, the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt, one reaches up to the point, you know, these majalis azam, these camps of Allah has to take us to the point that we can see our places in the heaven. We need to reach up to the point that we have a yaqeen and we live with the yaqeen. Our eyes should be open that one day our Imam of age should say to me, would you like to see your place in the heaven? Let me show you. Stand in the place of Abu, Abu Habib and Mazahir. Sometimes Put yourself in the shoes of Muslim and Muslim. Find your place. Brothers and sisters, once again today, I would like to say salam upon the daughter of Abba Abdullah. And uh, make this my just again for this personality that is the daughter of Abba Abdullah buried in uh, Syria. She has suffered a lot. I would like to say her final suffering today. But let us see what type of sufferings, what type of tragedies she has gone through. There are many tragedies for uh, this group. One of the tragedies that uh, Hamid ibn Muslim says that I saw that she was running in the battlefield of Karbala. And I looked at the, there is a little fire on her garments and she's running around. And I saw that there, there is somebody on the camel, on the horse, he's getting close to this uh, young lady. I thought that he wants to help this young lady. He says that I saw that uh, this lion curse person, he uh, comes down from the horse and he stands beside this lady. And he says that uh, I started looking at that he put his hands close to his, his ear 
And then I saw the bits of blood coming out. And she started crying in the battlefield of Karbala. She said, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, for my father. The one who was always searching for her father because she was the beloved daughter of Allah. When she, she became in prison, Imam Sajjad says, my sister was placed in a room where she was alone. In a room where there was no roof. She was alone, she was crying during the days and nights. It is narrated there was a night when she saw a dream. Maybe in the dream, her father said, Oh, Sakina, when are you are going to meet with me? I'm just waiting for you. For those who have a little daughter, just think that Abu Abdullah Hussain and his beloved daughter. And when she saw a dream at that time, she wakes up, she started crying. When she started crying, all the Ahlul Bayt, they got together. And... Uh, uh, the soldiers of Yazid, they reported Yazid that there is a little daughter, she's crying in the prison, and she only says, Ya Abba Tahu, Ya Abba Abdullah. <laughs> and then uh, this Naeem, this cursed person, wakes up at night, he says, just take the head of Abba Abdullah towards uh, this daughter and maybe she will feel comfortable. It is said that these soldiers, they took the head of Abba Abdullah Hussain They came close and it was covered. It was covered. When it was covered, when uh, they brought it close, she thought they brought some gifts. They brought something for Sakina. And then they took that cloth from the, the head of Abba Abdullah Hussein and she started looking. These are the words that I I learned from Maktal. She started looking at the face of Abba Abdullah and then she said, Oh my my father, what has happened to you? <laughs> Who beheaded you, oh my father? Who made this operation? How this tragedy has happened? She started speaking with Abba Abdullah Hussein. And then what she did? She got close to the face of Abba Abdullah Hussein. And she started kissing. She started kissing on the face of Abba Abdullah. On the cheeks of Abba Abdullah Hussein. She started kissing the lips of Abba Abdullah When she started kissing in her other hand, Zainab Salamullah she was saying, Oh Sakina, you have to have patience. You have to have sabr. And she was continuously kissing. It is narrated she put her lips with her choice, but she could not wake up from there. She was just sleeping over there. And then she thought that she would like to live with Abba Abdullah and Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. Then Imam Sajjad comes close and she says, he says, Oh my dear sister, wake up now. What has happened to you? But he looked at Sakina. The Shakina has already parted. She left this world. She departed from this world because she had seen her father asking her, Oh my Sakina, can you come close to me? Now let me ask Imam Sajjad, you know, Imam Sajjad remembers Sham a lot. He says, Asham, Asham, Asham. Maybe he used to remember because he remembered the time when he was in prison and his sister was died in the prison. I do not know how he buried Sakina. How he made a ghosl for Sakina. How he gave coffin for Sakina. But Bakhtal only says, brothers and sisters, 
when Imam Sajjad and Karwan was leaving the Syria, when they were leaving the Syria, and Imam Sajjad, when he came outside the Syria, and Hazrat Zainab says that I saw my son Ali ibn Hussein looking behind towards the Syria, looking behind towards Damascus, and saying, Oh, my sister Sakina, oh, my sister Ruqayya, I'm leaving you alone. There's nobody in Damascus. I'm leaving you alone. There's a long grave on the city of Damascus. And she says that he was looking time by time, time by time while he was heading towards Karbala. He was just looking behind. I would remember, brothers and sisters, when Abba Abdullah al Hussein was leaving the camp. At that time, Hazrat Zainab asked, Zainab asked, that, oh my brother, when you go towards the battlefield, go slowly and look behind towards the camp. That is how Imam Sajjad was looking towards the Damascus. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihun wa sayyalamu al-ladheena walamu ayyamu al-qalabiyyan qalibun bismika al-azim al-a'azam al-a'az al-ajal al-akram ya Allahu ya Allahu ya Allah ya Allahu ya Allahu ya Allah ya Allahu ya Allahu ya Allahu ya Allah اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من اعوانه وانصاره اللهم ايد قائدنا وولي امرنا اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفار والمشركين والمنافقين اللهم اجعل اواقب امورنا خيرا اللهم اجعل اواقب امورنا خيرا بجاه محمد واله الطيبين الطاهرين ماتن حسين يا حسين يا حسين